Tag Studios proudly presents the Almost Daily Zencast. Sorry, this is the special segment, News Breaking News. Interrupting the usual opening, I want to cut right to what we want to talk about. It's been a crazy week. If you haven't watched the news all week, and you just checked in today over brunch, you're probably still reeling. My jaw hit the ground, and I'm not easily shocked or amazed. But this, for those of you who live under a rock and don't check into the news ever, and are only listening because you're friends and fans and supporters of me from a spiritual sort of light worker community place, and you're like, what is he talking about? Or anyone else that's like, what is he talking about? This summary um, firing of so many members of government that's happened, that's encroached and building, and I don't think hit its its intended crescendo just yet, uh, that ended just now, or the most recent that I'm aware of was a bunch of attorneys general, if I'm not mistaken, from different states. There's a mixed bag, I think. I'm hearing different reporting, and I think some of them quit and some of them fired. But there's one guy tweeting very voraciously now that he's uh, free of, you know, government non-disclosure agreement act stuff, uh, talking about how, no, I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay and help and contribute and be supportive of the president, and I was fired. And I think he's kind of Middle Eastern looking or sounding. Uh, that I haven't looked into because uh, – you know, I'm not here to be an authoritative news source. I'm here to talk and comment about it. You can go look this stuff up yourself. You've got Google on every fucking device in your house. Uh, but it is worthy of noting that if you're not paying attention, if you're not, if you're a Trump fan and you're not paying attention uh, up close to Trump's actual actions. Um, then you're probably not really cognizant of the gutting that the federal government is currently and very rapidly uh, undergoing. It's it's like being pruned voraciously by a, an overenthusiastic 11-year-old that just realized he can make some money gardening but hasn't learned anything about gardening. You know, it's mowing people's lawns and pruning their things with with the lawnmower, <laughs> their, their shrubbery. This is ridiculous. This, is, For the first time, I think it's actually... I feel warranted in using the phrase, this is unprecedented. Uh, up until recently, I have felt very strongly as a, as a pop culture social commentary commentator, as a talking voice in your ear, that none of this is really unprecedented other than the level of flagrant uh, neglect and incompetence by which it's being done. All of the stuff that presidents do kind of tends to run in the same themes. Um, to recap for anybody that isn't a hardcore follower of my sort of typical social media postings, you know, the the for decades now, for most of our adult life, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have played good cop, bad cop on the American populace. I love America, don't get me wrong, but I'm critical of the level of corruption that the government has gotten at. And they want a very you know, divided and conquered public, distracted in arguing about which way to fight the government, which is not possible because they already sold themselves and profited on the biggest and the most scariest of all the death-making machines. And they've only sold you and I, the American public, uh, you know, the wimpiest of ones. So no matter how many you've got them amassed, it's just no competition to the drone bombs they're going to drop at you from outer space. You know, it's just not going to, you're not going to have a chance. So, and also, it's not a very viable solution in terms of uh, agitated, uh, you know, civic activity or civil unrest. Protest and speak out, yes, uh, but start doing dumb things with your guns? No, it's never going to get anywhere besides shot at. And those who live by the gun die by the gun. And that's my general sort of political stance because I believe in organized political action, but none of this threatening to secede and have a civil war. We don't need to go through all that stuff. We should have learned those lessons already. Slap on the wrist, 
silly monkey, letting your ego get all stroked up. Anybody out there getting seething at the mouth, you know, foaming at the mouth for a revolution. The revolution has to happen in the mind first before any kind of organized political change can happen out on the streets and in the buildings that we, the people, own. Uh, or you, the people, own. Because technically, I'm not a citizen. I'm just a permanent legal resident alien for complete disclosure. I have my green card. And I'm not, I don't got any plans to travel for the next 10 years. So I'm not sweating any bullets over here. And I'm exercising my free speech as a member of the, of, you know, the civic society of America. I am, uh, you know, guaranteed that right. The only right I don't have compared to citizen is the right to vote. But I am allowed to talk about how I think people should vote. Um, thus, we are here. And we are living in Trumptopia. And we're all, I'm like, you know, some people I think are still sort of waking up to the nightmare of it because they just checked out. They were so bummed out that they have not been watching at all, whatever your opinion is of the news media. And yeah, it's all part of the octopus, the hydra's tentacles of uh, the corporate system that owns the oppression. Uh, but, you know, there's layers of, of complicity and distance from the organizers. And whatever observation may teach us, is that the news does, some people in the news are trying to fight the good fight. And there may very well be people in government really trying to fight the good fight. And I think that the spiritual calling of our age is for uh, all of us crazy new age woo-woos to step up and fight the good fight in the public, civic, uh, you know, arena of politics. Politics is, is supposed to be, when, it's, when you eliminate all the negative prejudices about it in terms of, you know, what you think, and I understand and respect all the negative statements about what politics is and is not. And I, half of that shit is absolutely true. Half of that shit is two-thirds true but mingled with a bunch of nonsense, okay? Um, whatever the position, it has to be agreed upon that we need to organize the activities at a state-by-state state and government, you know, at a national level. Uh, and we need to represent each other and ourselves for our best interests, which means we need to hold we, the people, the masses have a civic responsibility, and a huge part of the problem is that we've let the psychology of us versus them and, the, and choosing between the lesser of two evils dominate our thinking, which has allowed you know, the plurality, if not majority, of American eligible voters to just not give a shit and not vote for whatever reason and whatever rationale. And I'm sending this to, to you guys who might qualify or self-identify that way. I send this with love and respect. I admire your choice. It's a bold protest movement. It is now time to organize in a different direction, okay? Because anyone who is paying attention to wrap things back to the theme, to the Trumptopian agenda, we are in a pickle, my friends. Let's set aside the, the, the theoretical issue of Russia for a hot minute. I'm going to do a whole Russia episode assuming that, A, it's not real and we're safe and I can talk about that without worrying for my life, um, you know, without scary paratroopers showing up and blowing me out of the water or toxic poisonous gas being blown in my face at the airport. Um, thus, my, like, faux attempted at anonymity. You'll note, uh, I'll acknowledge anybody on the internet with any sort of internet understanding can figure out who I am pretty quickly. And I'm, as a transcendentalist, I choose to not fear death. But also, I want to see what happens. I want to see who comes next and, and where this goes, right? So, And I want to exercise my free speech right to talk about it this national experience we're all living through. If you've just listened to the previous couple of episodes, you know that I propose that theoretically the, the statement we are all mirrors of each other applies to all people of the human race, including those who are in corrupt positions of power and oppressing us. No matter what level of crazy you think it gets to, at the fundamental level, the important thing to focus on is unity and transcending the problem through a sort of cosmic healing of the species, okay? And I think that tuning into events from a non-political perspective with this sort of healing and very, like, genuine intent allows for a really radical different analysis of what's going on and helps, is a way as a stepping stone to not tell what people to believe, but help people sort out what to see clearly for themselves if you've got people who don't understand what's going on or are clouded by the propaganda, okay? That's why I couch my entire uh, show or, or ramblings at this point because no one calls in. I don't think we have any live 
Yeah, my my little uh, dashboard, there's a little quotey bubble thing where you could be having live chat with anybody listening on the Sprecher app. And it says, feels lonely in here. Be the first to send a message. I'm not going to send a message to myself, Sprecher. Um, right. So if, the, if I was engaging with discussion, I'm sure someone would ask, well, what does that mean in practical terms? And, uh, and I say this. There's a lot of debate going on in the media, which is a sort of opinion manipulator system, whether you – no matter how innocently you take it. But, you know, pointers to the facts are there because they're, the good ones are at least pretending to sound like they're based on reality. So they're at least sprinkled with some real facts that can be looked up and therefore somewhat useful tool. Um, and some of the facts seem to indicate, you know, that there's a real – uh, and very potentially scary agenda already being executed that's got nothing – that could potentially have nothing to do with Russia, nothing to do with the Illuminati, and just sort of a misguided, uh, self-generated political ideology uh, coming from a, a homegrown American citizen that's, that just happens to be by hook or by crook getting whatever assistance they could to get into position. And that's the sort of the Bannon uh, Tillerson action set. And by that, I mean, this is my evidence that like, I don't come at this from the bias of I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican. I get accused of being everything in the political spectrum. I am not any of those things. I strive to have liberated myself from political ideology because the first thing you have to like grapple with when you adhere to a political ideology is do you really comprehend the ideology the entirety of the political platform and what they're peddling and how it's working on you neuro-linguistically and spiritually as well as intellectually and most people don't they just go are they for some of the things that i like and in general not for things that i think are horrible okay i'll put my vote there and then they blindly vote down the line and that's fine that's a way to be I'm not criticizing or hating on those people. I'm sending anybody and everybody that operates that way. I guess this is the universe's indicated moment that I should acknowledge uh, that I, whenever I'm driving as a driver of a relatively safe-feeling commercial, non-electric, you know, mid-sized um, vehicle, that I try to be as courteous as possible for motorcycle riders, and I'm constantly praying for their safety. Because that's impressive and scary, and I would never do it. I might have done it in my 20s, but back then there was like two-thirds of the, the freeway traffic. And it sounded, you know, freeway traffic felt like crazy insane back then. So you can imagine what it feels like to some of us now. Uh, and it's only projected to get worse. Uh, but that's an episode for a whole no- That's a topic for a whole other episode on civic planning and intent, conscious intent behind thoughtful, mindful choices in civic planning, which we do not have. As a, you know, system system of this, a symptomology rather of the system wide, ego driven corruption, of what we call normal everyday society, and that we a bunch of us just sort of blindly root for and love and go USA USA number one and don't understand they're profiteering on us and cutting corners on every corner and lagging as hard as possible in every direction, in order to make the most money, and. When you see past the political, the pandering political promises and propaganda about the particular case matter, we're in day 51, correct? I posted day 50 yesterday. That was Friday. Today's Saturday. We're in day 51 of Trumptopia time. And there's a lot of things that come out of his mouth. And some of them are real. And I'll hit that note on that chord a lot. The scariest thing about Donald J. Trump as president as bef- and before as, as private citizen run- operating business deals that some of which borderline on international scams of epically scary proportions if you if you believe the reporting on some of them um, he, he was motivated by personal gain at all cost a classic ego tactic and my spiritual the- theos- theosophic and f- philosophic uh theory is that Trump is a a man injured by something in his youth, as we all are men, uh, because the measure of manhood is not something we're prepared for when we're innocent children and free of any ideology. 
which is why the ancients understood ancients from all cultures, but specifically most most notably and easily verified um, in Confucius's era in China. It was known that you needed to indoctrinate children because you couldn't let them be completely free of all ideology because they just you know piss and shit everywhere and throw rocks through things and break stuff and not care. Because uh, to be that immersed in the moment is to know that all form is going to die and, and break and fall apart anyways. And truly, uh, you know, enduring bliss is more important than order. Uh, and that can be chaotic. Uh, but, and to live in a, in, in a big group that's sort of hectic and stressful sometimes. And we are forced to live in a normal mode for a brief period of time because we have to achieve certain responsibilities like taking care of each other, providing health care to each other, providing housing, providing clothing, providing food and nourishment. And we're not doing that very well at the national, international, or state-to-state -state community. We're not doing all of that very well. Let's be honest. Our political society, globally, as well as locally, wherever you might be listening to this from, is corrupt and broken to some level or another, even if it seems really awesome. Dare I say, even over in Greenland, where they've had this, or Iceland, or, or, or is it fin Finland, whichever one, the handful of all those snow countries that had this really great you know, fire all the bankers and replace them all with hopefully people that are going to be less corrupt than the last generation. Arguably, and I say this with, with love and respect to anybody who might come across this that's con involved in that and has participated in that and has always sent you love and energy. But if the political tactic, the political revolution, whether peaceful or not, is modeled after cutting off Hydra's heads, Hydra regrows to in the place of every one that we cut because Hydra is just a manifestation, a, a deep, metastructural, very powerful, very high-order manifestation of the two fundamental spirals, as I talk about in Deconstructing, Deconstructing Dichotomies, that operate in, the, in this universe as we know it that we live in. Ego spiral down towards the repetitive merry-go-round of meat grinder suffering, you know, flesh puppet reincarnation forever until we learn the lesson which is essentially a kind of beating your head into a brick wall, existentially, because the lesson remains fundamentally simple. Pick ego and all of its blunders and all of its hor horrors and all of its pains and sufferings and all of its delights, occasional delights, because it seduces you with that. Or pick ascension, a.k.a. the, the many-fold path, because it's a harmonic fractal. Ego's harmonic fractal is kind of self-folded into itself to repeat us. This is sort of the baseline place. We've already gotten, we've evolved this far. We qualify for the next classroom. This is the pinnacle of the material flesh plane. Achieving consciousness that is bordering on and transcending self-consciousness and is tacitly tasked with successfully learning how to uh, pass the, the core test. Flesh and indulgements of the ego flesh, you know, slippery slope trap or ascension, which means a difficult struggle towards abdicating all these things that we're accustomed to. Things like convenience, as scary as that sounds. Things like power and greed. All right? The, applying this to the model of our politics brings us a really different motivating uh, sort of inspiration, I suggest, which is why I'm, I've created a podcast about this. I'd love to be on a radio station with a couple of co-hosts, a cynic that totally disagrees, you know, and, uh, and someone who's in the middle who doesn't really understand what we're talking about but wants to learn and has lots of questions, and an audience portion to, uh, to have call-in questions and talk at length about this. Um, I, I feel like I'm the Oprah Winfrey, the male Oprah Winfrey, the, the divine masculine talking puppet uh, Oprah Winfrey character, potentially, and if I don't become that in real life, I'm at least going to write it as a character in this you know, collection of stories that I'm, I'm slowly trying to cobble together and talk about it as if I were. Because in theory, that's the recipe to helping manifest that. So here we go. Um, if we lived in a society where we healed ourselves and our ego at a purely practical level through the holistic approach that begins with nutrition at all fundamental levels, the nutrition of our bodies, the high quality, local, sustainable, green, beyond organic, quote unquote, but spiritually 
healthy uh, nutrition of our bodies and also our minds and also our energetic structures, which we can call our spirit, we wouldn't have politicians being this corrupt. How do we get there? How do we get there from here? That's the challenge that we face. That's why we have Donald Trump in office and Steve Bannon and Rex uh, Tillerson, Tillington. I always want to call him Rex Harrison, which makes me instantly forget and doubt and question what his actual name is. Uh, but the ExxonMobil friend of Putin guy. Again, I'm not even wanting to get into the Russia issue right now. Set that aside if you want to like get if that's where you're seething to argue because this is not about arguing. Let's look at what they've actually done. The executive orders were fluff, part of the decoy things. The wall's not actually being built yet. I haven't heard any, uh, uh, you know, things about a you know fully vetted uh, proposal from any private or corporate things yet. Um, but you know that could all be a ruse of disinformation, and maybe they are tearing apart, uh, you know, towns, uh, border towns to, to lay in this massive infrastructure. I doubt it though, because I think they would be touting it, because that would be massive jobs, and they love to applaud themselves about profiting. The because there's many concentric rings of involvement. The 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 corporate aristocrat, aristocrats that consider themselves good Americans and upright standing citizens are still profiteering. And indulging in that sin of ego, of, pr- of pride over greed. It's a double whammy, my friends. And it's not that I'm a, a sin and you're all going to hell sort of person, but there's a reason why we have that language. There's a reason why we have that signifier, uh, which we don't need to get into now. But Banning and Tillerson have either allowed leftover staffers in, in the various departments that they influence or directly control that are leaving because they quit, because they they were due to retire and they didn't want to stay on, because or to this new extent, this new ex- extreme extent, they're firing them, and yeah, they were going to drain the swamp for sure, okay, but an intelligent, well thought out plan, even by a statist, a non spiritual person, would not be hack and slash the department to it to the bone, and then piss everybody off and see how many leave without having replacements selected that are smart, intelligent, well prepared. And why the hell would you remove the benefit of having some sort of transition time? Which, as many people who are leaving and in protest speaking on, on whatever public platform they can get, and that has a wide exposure. And this is where the news media is valuable. This is where I wish I was contending with the, the corporate problem of trying to be seduced uh, and, and sell out to the money and had I wish I was in a, a a big great big platform and had access to the millions and millions of audience, so I could say the radical statement that these kleptocrats, Trump and friends, Trump and company are kleptocrats, and whether they have any other deeper ideologue than that, other than hate and greed, and you really don't need a theory, a conspiracy theory more complicated than hate and greed to explain all of this. Uh, they want to profiteer in all the typical ways that government usually does, but they want to radically reduce the, those involved in the scam. Government has, for, de- for generations, always included that ingredient and allowed for people to genuinely be the white hat, the shining armor knight on the white pony, the cowboy with the big, you know, 10-gallon white cowboy hat. And those people either, you know, live miserable lives and slowly it dawns on them that it's all a game that is driven by, if not, if not outright owned and operated by, it's heavily influenced and gerrymandered and, and, and sort of tongue-in-cheek. We're all in bed together because greed is greed. And uh, profiting on every aspect of a nation-state's process of being a living community is extremely profitable. Duh. And so is keeping them almost, if not perpetually, in some sort of military conflict. Because in just in, think about it this way, just in preparing for war, the making of the death machines and in the practicing of the death machine maneuvers, those who constructed and designed the death machines profiteer. They don't just profit, they profiteer. Like greedy, evil. If you're a Christian, you understand that this is a sin. On multiple levels, 
one that would, in theory, according to that system, send a person to hell. Which brings us to level two uh, of my sort of general approach in theory, why it's important to really understand the agenda. I think one of the real motivating factors of the Trumptopian agenda, which would probably take several 45-minute episodes to, to really deconstruct from my perspective. And mind you, I only know what is allowed to be seen on all the crazy media. And we uh, acknowledging that media is controlled by the same overall overlords that are the those that are effectively oppressing us, or you know, if not oppressing us, making our lives ridiculously and unhealthily convenient and toxic, so that we won't care about the bullshit that they do. If you don't call that oppression, I don't know what you qualify as oppression. Okay, and let's ignore Russia. Forget about Russia. We can talk about Russia another time. They are allowing the structures of government to deflate, like to fall apart, like, a, like Eddie Izzard says, like a flan in a cupboard, and or just gobbling it up. What are they going to do with all these empty offices, office buildings and empty office stuff not being used anymore? And all the – where is all the revenue, whether it comes from taxes or from a shadow government? Where is all, all the money that, that flows through payroll going to go? They used to pay all these people. I understand balancing the budget and not being in debt. Even those who take themselves seriously, it's somewhere being in the middle and being a realist and not not spiritual, but not a conspiracy theory nut. Have you asked these questions of these people? Where is the mainstream media outcry of like, what are you going to do with all that money now? Who's going to cart it off? This is what greedy, pilfering dictators do in third world countries and that we occasionally watch a CNBC special – sort of patronizing documentary about on Sunday mornings and then immediately forget. And they're doing it to us right here and right now, I think. And yes, uh, I think that their intent on the short term is to collapse as many government agencies as possible. They literally had that in a, as a plank on the platform, but they're going to do it to a degree that is unwarranted and unwise, even according to the standards of those who believe in, quote-unquote, responsible small government. And that's the scary thing, is that these guys are, uh, they may or may not be paid Russian operatives, but they are most certainly, uh, the three of them, this trifecta of guys, definitely super, super really rich guys that don't care what happened and want to be as rich as possible before they die and are going to do it vis-a-vis the process of bringing their own private political ideology to the extreme and hoping it doesn't cause a complete clusterfuck disaster that they can't clean up and that we don't. And maybe, just maybe, my friends, and this is where I get a little crazy radical. This is where people either tune out because it's too insane sounding or they get a little bit too turned on because they want the revolution. But maybe just maybe these guys literally do think it would be a good idea to have a civil war in this country. I don't know how much direct money ties Russia has to the NRA. That's a question no one's asked recently. And it's irrelevant. Like I said, forget about Russia. It isn't about Russia. If you think it's about Russia, then you don't really get it. The, the, the new world order is not a new thing, folks. The new world order existed before the collapse of the Tower of Babel. If you read the founding documents or read the speeches given by uh, uh, people uh, in the American government, they talk about the New World Order all the way back, openly. It's always been around. It's always being repackaged and resold because it's all about branding um, in this country and in this culture that we live in. And they, their primary concern in terms of getting away with it is not what new war and what things they'll violate or to what degree – they're going to squash us. They're writing this perfect plausible deniability thing. Maybe the place where Trump is scariest is because he really is um, what some of the centrists have argued, some of his fans have argued, which is frightening, um, that he's a loose cannon and he really isn't. He's just, he's said yes to people, but he's got whatever his own private reserve secret motivation really is. And if there is that, He's just a kleptocrat. He doesn't give a shit, and he wants as much money and power as he thinks. And the problem with that is more is never enough. What do we do? 
We don't go firing off guns because they might secretly want that. Because guess what? They're going to win. The president is the chief, uh, you know, general and controls the largest army in the world that spends as much as the next six or seven countries combined. No militia, no independent militia here is going to, we might be able to protect ourselves, but uh, in terms of, you know, not getting shot right away. Uh, But let's not let it get there because there is something we can do. If we listen, maybe, just maybe, I haven't made this meme, but we need not the tinfoil hat guy, but the crazy dreadlocked vegan, you know, meditates for five hours a day, um, always smiling, glowing with energy, you know, might be able to levitate crazy hippie new age woo-woo guys. Not the crazy creepy perverts that take on, you know, you know, not anyone that does something clearly, obviously then self-defeatingly immoral, uh, like, you know, abusiveness and, you know, whatever. The obvious duh stuff. But anyone who's really just genuinely living this beggar bowl, rice bowl, kind of like the Buddha, kind of like Christ type lifestyle and preparing themselves for the ascension path. Because one of the strongest, most significant and under explained critical puzzle pieces of everything I've ever come across from whatever cultural source about mystic ascension uh, spirituality is that it is not just a private event for this dude or that dude, for Jesus or Buddha. It's something that is the living birthright for every human individual and is a cumulative networked process. Okay? So maybe, just maybe, we need a meme that says that crazy meditating hippie guru right was right about everything all along. And you wouldn't even need if the okay. The, this is all posited on the notion. Let's take a step back. The universe itself is sort of like a video game that God designed. That we little, not us in our bodies, but we, the original unity of thought, of of perception and thought, is the same thing as God that manifested this. And it's sort of like a matrix type thing. I propose it's completely organic. So magic, whatever you call a technology you don't understand, but it's organic and real and part of it, that it itself, the living organism called the cosmos, called the universe, is a living entity and being that has a really complex, very intense self-awareness that cannot like put a pile of million dollars on my desk right now, but can commune through energy and emotion and intuition directly with any self-aware and approaching enlightenment individual because that's one of our jobs is to advance up this classroom, uh, this progressive evolution at a big cosmic level. For anybody that didn't lose me when I say that and goes, yeah, 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 we know, or yeah, I think that's true too, but I'm not sure what to do about it, it should be clear that to not only survive, but to thrive as we transition beyond Trumptopia, you know, first 100 days. We need to meditate, healing, sin, broad, what I call broadcast, because uh, it's a spiritual process um, that literally involves, you know, the belief in this body avatar's capacity to intrinsically work with the systems in the universe, whether we understand them in English or in science, in math yet or not, but to transmit deep, powerful frequency because the entire universe, according to some of the math, is energy, whether it's material or thought or sound or light. It's all energy. We're just perceiving it a certain way in our brains and that the brain is not just an organ of perception but also has intrinsic, natural, organic skill set of broadcasting, We just are discouraged by those who profiteer on us and have been for centuries to ignore those skills. They hope that one day they'll breed it out of us. If you have a a real deep 
you may already have a sort of framework for what you think is going on. And it, maybe it's Anunnaki lizard people. Maybe it's some other planet, you know, vampires that come and, 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 and farm us for our DNA. Whatever you think it is. One of the things that's definitely an ingredient there, because I assert to you that the ascension path bodily evolution thing is legit and can be – you can – both research it and see that there's a, a long history of this statement and that there's claims that if you practice certain practices deeply enough, with enough giving, yourself, giving yourself enough time, you will experience undeniable direct interpersonal inside yourself phenomena that there's no other way to describe other than the supporting evidence for the thesis. That the human individual lives only as an individual in a very complex and persistent illusion state, and that there are many layers of other parts of the, what's going on in reality that support being alive that we're not aware of, and that we don't need to be aware of, frankly, in order to get by. But in order to thrive, in order, and this is important, not just to get by, not just to survive under whatever crazy political a direction the political pendulum of of that social organizational process seems to be pointing at in order to truly thrive under any condition thrive in joy in bliss in healthfulness in healing and in participation whether you understand it or not of the larger meta structural procedures and like target Events. I don't want to call them goals because then that inv- invokes – goals invite ego because you cling to goals and then things are different. But um, – and that's a problem here with the body, with the body a- avatar. But in terms of getting through this body avatar reality that we live in, we all become Neo to rely on the, the movie Matrix as analogy. We all need to become Neo and learn to step into other rooms, let's say or other environments of the holographic dream matrix that is our reality and learn how to utilize those tools. As some point out, some ancient schools and some modern teachers point out, it's a process of remembering. We already know that which is at the core of our personal, and this is why I tell you there, the evidence is hard to discuss and hard to point to other than to say, Look within. That revolution has to happen inside your mind because the phenomena you experience deep within get reduced to very esoteric or potentially easily dismissible things about feelings and emotions and perceptions. Um, But they are undeniable and verifiable and repeatable. You can perceive glimpses of aspects of the unfolding fractal that is the matrix around you, just like Neo, as we see in the movie, sometimes seeds the, the, you know, the alien code of the robot construct, um, which is why I suggest to you that I've read enough of other people's claims and statements, and I've researched enough in as scientific a way as possible, as if I was a, a, a lifelong doctoral student in some really serious academic school of public theosophy, uh, in other words, the, the investigation into reality as it actually is, as opposed to the, assert, the, the propping up of any particular ism or ideological construct about what it might be or should be or could be, okay? And that's what's critical. We have to understand what, what's really going on on all the levels. And what's really going on in Trumptopia is that the American government system, as we know it today, and as much as it needed a diet perhaps, or some restructuring, is being just hack-jobbed. And what's, what's short-sighted about it is people like Bannon and Tillerson and Trump won't really know what to do in the moment of emergencies. And therefore, all the operati, the, oper- the operating systems that they haven't gotten to hacking down to yet, uh, like support emergency services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, may not function properly at all. And what if something terrible happens? And what if, you know, we, we, we get all kooky and go mob mentality and just start rioting? They want that because they'll profit on it anyway because they'll go hide in their bunkers. And if and when we all calm down and the power comes back on, uh, 
they'll just subjugate us into stupider, stricter, more dumb laws. And we could be doing something so radically different by participating in the natural organic healing process, right? We might be able to influence some change. That's, I'm going to leave more of that for maybe a follow-up segment. Maybe I'm going to do a part two, but my time's about to run out for this particular segment. We're going to take a, a brief break, but I'm going to come back live. One idea I had the, earlier this week was to try to do a marathon thing to see if that dries up viewership uh, so or, or audience participation at any rate. If you're a new listener, thanks for listening. Hello and namaste. This was really strange and out of the box and maybe didn't make any sense to you. Check in with some of my earlier episodes. Uh, you'll see keywords in the titles. It's all interconnected. If you're into binge-watching stuff, you know, and you've got the time this weekend, next week, whatever, binge watch it. And if you dig it and if it made you think and if it inspired you to check back in with your yoga practice and use it not just like a thing for the gym, like a gym-like activity and exercise for the body, but also, you know, start meditating again in it while you sit in pose uh, and, for, you know, and forgive yourself and everybody and all that stuff. And if you uh, start, you know, enjoying or, you know, discovering, enjoying the process of self-discovery, not because I told you what to believe or what to think, but because I gave you an interesting, quirky introduction to where to look for yourself, which is deep down within, in the silence inside behind your mind, through compassion and forgiveness of your ego for being your stupid ego. The more, the more any of us practice that a little bit more every day, the, the more likely we will be able to manifest healing change uh, that influences those. As long as, and if we participate, those of us who meditate, participate in a supportive way with those who protest and with those who speak uh, on larger media and those who are you know, uh, pop, you know, pop culture influencers, the, the more likely we can build uh, a groovier, more relaxed place to live and love that we call America. So, to that end, let's all be good humans. Broadcasting peace, love, and grooviness at all of you. And asking you so humbly to visit me in my other social media and click interact, post your questions, post your comments. Tag your friends that you think might appreciate some specific post or comment I made somewhere. Not because I want you to believe in me, because I hope it inspires you to go investigate it yourself. And remember, my friends, always remember to look within, because that's where the revolution has to start. No matter where you are, no matter how advanced, or how beginning, how much of a beginner or noob you are, look within. May peace, love, and grooviness Fill your heart today. <laughs> <laughs>